you know, none of us is perfect. I'm, I'm going to be the first one to come out and say that. We all have, have things that we struggle with, things that, things that we're not the best at. For me, example, I have many different flaws. One of them happens to be that I have a very bad temper. I get easily frustrated, my patience wears thin relatively quickly, and I can do and say things without thinking. I mean, we all have these moments, but I have a particularly hard time with them. For me, it's a daily struggle of trying to make sure that I keep myself in line to make sure that I don't do anything that I'm going to regret, and I've gotten very good at it over time. Sure, I still get frustrated at things like some games, like, you know, when I'm playing RimWorld and the game just keeps on going wrong for some reason and doesn't seem like we can get a leg up anytime, or like when I'm doing Prison Architect. And no matter what I seem to be doing, it doesn't seem to be fixing anything for reasons that I can't seem to un understand. And this entire series thus far has been a, a practice in maintaining my temper and keep myself on the even keel. That is until yesterday. I'm going to lose my temper now. When? Right now. Well, when? <laughs> when somebody in my Discord server, and by the way, I have an open Discord server for now. I cannot say that it may it will remain open forever. If I ever get, you know, people that are coming in that are a problem and they have to be dealt with, I may have to close off them. But for now, I have an open Discord server. So if you'd like to join us, just look for a link down below. Regardless, though, I had one of the uh, the people in the Discord server who uh, who tagged me and said, you know, you keep, um, you keep saying that Meeple Station is this, this in-development early access game. It's not. And, and I just wanted to, to correct you on that. And I'm just like, no. No, 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 no. There is no way that this is a finished game. Because, in addition to me having a bit of a temper, I also have really bad eyes and I struggle with reading. That is, both reading when I'm trying to read and noticing things. Particularly, I never noticed that on the page it actually lists whether it's, you know, early access or not. And now that I'm sitting here looking at the title screen, what what's that? What's that say? What 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 is that? What is that? What the fuck is that? What is that private pile? What is that? Version 1. 1. Dot zero dot nine. By the way, for those of you who don't do game development stuff, generally speaking, at least this is my understanding of it, you can correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but when you're reading versions, here's how you do it. This, this number right here is a release version, okay? This is not a build, this is the release version. So when you release something, you release version 1.0. As in, this is the finished product. The first decimal place is generally related to content releases, as in you're adding things to the game. You have inserted, like, maybe a new faction or a new tech tree or you've added something to the game that wasn't there before. And then after that, you have fixes. So these do not add content to the game, but these merely try to patch bugs, patch holes, you know, fix things. So if we were going to read this, assuming that, you know, my, my interpretation of this is correct, we are on version 1 with 9 bug fixes so far. This is a finished product. This is unacceptable by any metric. Now, I, I commented before that I had played a game very similar to this. All right? Space Base DF9. It was by... What are they called? Hold on. I got a thing here for this. 
It's by, oh no, wait, I remember. It's by Double Fine Studios. Now, Double Fine Studios has done a lot of really, really good work in the past. They're the ones that made the legendary game Psychonauts, which I've never played. But literally, I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about the game Psychonauts. They did the game Brutal Legend. I love Brutal Legend! And they've got a large library. And then they did Space Base DF9. And I don't know what drugs they were on when they did that. But it was so bad. So bad. That they abandoned the entire thing. It's actually still for sale on Steam. It's like two or three dollars. It's not worth two or three dollars because it's unplayable. And believe me, they should be held responsible for that. But this? This is as, as playable as Space Base DF9. Except that this, this game right now, if you go to Steam right now, is $20. I play games, okay? I play games, I narrate games, I try to do what I can in here to make them entertaining to you because this is my hobby, it's your hobby too if you're watching this, and I'm trying to make entertainment value for you. And I charge on my Patreon $5 if you want to support me, $10 if you just really like me and the option is there. I've got to redo it someday because I think I honestly charge too much for that, but I provide at least entertainment value for this, and I try to provide other things. I try to do educational lectures on the weekends, I try to do creative streams on the weekends, I try to give you as much as I can to make that money that you give me worth it. This is not worth anything, and they charge twice as much as I do for it. Yes, you could play this whenever you want. It's, it's your game. You can do whatever you want with it. You can play it every day. I also put out content every day. <clears throat> I, I, I work seven days a week. 365 days a year. I don't take holidays off. I don't take my birthday off. I don't take weekends off. I am here trying to deliver something every day. So in that regards, we're not that different. But I think that what I provide is just... A score times better than this. Because at least what I do, you can enjoy, you can critique, we can go back and forth on, I would love to go back and forth in the comments, but this, this is garbage. And I looked at what else these guys have done, okay? I looked at what else Game Claw Studio has done. They don't have a huge portfolio. They have done, it looks like, Two games? Three games. So they did... Well, no, two games. Because I'm looking at their whole thing on Steam. They did Meeple Station. They did Regions of Ruin. And while I've never played it, just looking at the, the pictures of it, they call it a town builder game. If I wanted to play a 2D, which is what that one is, a 2D town builder game, you know what I would do? I would go play Starbound. Starbound, which was made by Chucklefish who have done a lot of very good games. They're not one of the best developers out there. And Starbound, I regard as one of the best worst games out there. Like, I'm not going to mince words. Starbound is not a great game. It's, it's okay. It's an okay game. The problem with Starbound is that it is... It is one pound of creativity in a 10-pound bag of potential. Like, you can do a lot of things in Starbound, and it does have a story, and it does have a campaign kind of as sorts. But the problem with Starbound is the same problem you have with Minecraft. Minecraft does technically now have a storyline to it. it. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. But generally speaking, when you go to play Minecraft, you got to make your own goals. The same thing is roughly true in Starbound. And that's why I say it's one of the best worst games I've ever played. Because 
in terms of story, the story is short. It's not exactly deep. The missions that you go on are okay. They're, they're creative, I guess. But you go through, you beat them. The story is shallow. I won't say it's non-existent, but it, it's really shallow. And you're not there for the story anyway, let's be honest. You're there to build things, explore planets, and... Yeah, make, make your own game. And if you want to see it, I love Starbound. I would be more than willing to do a Starbound series, if anybody is interested. In fact, you can gain crew members, and I can rename crew members, and I'm just, I'd be all over it. You want to see Starbound? I will do the best worst game I know. Because even though it's not great, it's amazing fun. This game, Meeple Station, is not that. I'm going to assume that Regions of Ruin is also not that. The only other thing they have is something called Justice.exe. They have a demo for it that came out in 2021. I have no idea what the status on that is, and just, I don't, I don't know. But to find, to find out that this, this is a finished product, I'm, I'm so angry. I'm so angry right now. Because I love building games. If you've paid attention to my channel at all, I love building games. I love RimWorld. I have literally tens of thousands of hours into RimWorld. Only partially because I tend to leave it on overnight when I fall asleep. But regardless of that, I love RimWorld. <clears throat> I love Prison Architect. Okay, Prison Architect is great. I did a series once on Terraria, but I'm really bad at Terraria. Still, I'm good at building things, and I enjoy building things there. I gave up on it because nobody was watching. And I was kind of stuck on a boss, and it's like, well, no one's watching it, so no one's going to care if I stop. But still, I enjoyed building there. Um, Starbound, I already mentioned, I love building towns there, too. I love building things. And when I saw Meeple Station in the Humble Bundle... I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help but jump on it. And now that I've done so, it is June 16th when this is coming out. The month is halfway over. I cannot just stop right now, pick something else, throw together an opening and a closing, and get a new series started. So we're kind of stuck with this for now. And you know what? I am going to see this out, and I am going to try and make it work the same way that I had tried to make Space Base DF9 work every time, even though I knew... I knew the game was unfinished, I knew the game was broken, I knew that it was going to end every single time, either with a meteor shower tearing apart my base, or masses of killbots invading. I still enjoyed playing it. This, however, is not even fun to play. Part of me does want to keep going and try to make it work out of spite. But at this point, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing it out of spite. I have spite for this developer. And I am going to remember Game Claw Studio. And I'm going to, if I ever see Game Claw Studio, their name, on a game again in the future, I will not only avoid it like the plague, but I will tell everybody else to avoid it because this is unacceptable. And I know that some people say, well, you can't be too judgmental because you're not a game developer. It's like, you know what? You're right. I'm not a game developer. Honestly, the only thing that stopped me from being a game developer is because when I was younger, I really enjoyed programming. And when I went to college, because college is so wonderful, they said, don't go into programming. Programming is a dead-end position. You'll never have a career as a programmer. And so I didn't, and I got out of programming for like 20 years. At this point, I've thought about going back into programming, but I am so far out of date that I don't even know how to get back into it. That being said, I may not be a video game programmer, but I am a Dungeons & Dragons game master. I am a Pathfinder game master. I build my own modules and my own game systems. The only thing different from what I do and what video game developers do is they do theirs on the computer and I do mine on pen and paper. 
I know how to make this stuff work, I simply lack the ability to translate it into a digital format. So I do feel well, uh, uh, well able to critique this. I, I'm so angry at this game right now that I don't even have the words. My vocabulary is failing me. I am that apoplectic at this game and this developer. So yeah, I had to get that off of my chest before we do anything else. Like, I will... I quit Fallout earlier this year. Like, I, I was really excited in February when Fallout came out. I think it was February. And then I realized that Fallout is... Not a good game. It's not a good game in the same way, though. Fallout is a perfectly serviceable game for what it is. The problem I have with Fallout is that it lies to you. Fallout gives you this big open world, and then it doesn't give you any clues. It gives you these missions, but it doesn't tell you how to actually complete them. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Because that's how I design most of my games. It's not my job to give you the solution. It's my job to give you the tools. My problem with Fallout, however, is that while Fallout pretends to give you this myriad of options, there is only one way to really play Fallout. And that is, you have to go in there as a tanky soldier. Because you can be the sneakiest sneak thief in the game, and my character was. But sooner or later, you're going to come across something you can't sneak past. Which means that even though the option was available to you, it wasn't actually a workable option to use. You could be the most charismatic person in the game, but the minute that something comes around that you can't, that there is something you can't talk your way out of, the entire charisma line ends there. There is only one way to beat Fallout, and that is you have to have a soldier character who can just tank everything and murder the entire world. And that's fine. If you want to do that, that's great. It works great for Diablo. It works great for Doom. It can work great in an RPG too, just don't pretend like there's other ways to do it. And on that same note, I'm sure that there is a way to make Meeple Station work. Because I'm sure that when they were developing it and they knew exactly how all the different mechanics and systems work, they could say, I've got to plug this thing into here, and we need to have this many of this thing, and we need to set these presets here so we're manufacturing enough. They knew the exact perfect way to play. The problem with needing to play the perfect way is that it is the only way to play. And then, your creativity kind of goes out the window. Now, maybe you can actually build a whole lot more here after you have done the perfect beginning. And then maybe you can develop a whole bunch of different stuff and make your space station look whatever way you want it to. But if there's only one, only one way to play it, then don't give people the option of having it a different way. Because that's just setting them up to failure. Then, they're going to look at your game the same way I do right now and say there's either one way to play or there's no way to play and the game is really non-functional. I don't know which one it is right now. I'm presuming that there is a way to make it work. I don't know. I can't prove it. I haven't been able to prove it thus far. We did it a little bit better the last time. I mean, the station didn't fall apart. The crew didn't suffocate. They just all committed suicide. What's the difference? So we're going to get into this and we're going to try it again. We're, we are going to try it again. Because I still have half a month left of this to do. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm done with this game. Okay? Like after, after June is done, I will uninstall this game and I will probably never touch it again. Unless they come out and say that we, we have made some major changes to this game. Let's just get into this. We've seen this before. We're skipping it. Now, I have had time to think about how would I change things. 
And obviously everybody went insane last time because I guess they didn't have their own rooms. So we're going to do that this time. And we're not going to start on the edge of the map this time. We are going to be doing this. Here's, here's how we're going to do this. So we know that we're going to start with five people. All right, and I'm going to start them right here. I'm going to say that we have five people, which means that we need to have five rooms. We need to have five rooms to start off. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five. All right, that's five rooms. Then we can go ahead and divide these up. And like I said, I... I know that I have a problem with my temper. I try really hard to keep my temper in check. And springtime is, like, the worst for me. Like, some people have seasonal affective disorder, and they get really sad during the winter. I have the same problem with seasonal affective disorder. Kinda. I get really... My, my temper really flares up in the spring. I don't know why, but I am aware of it, and so I try to keep it in check. But this... Oh, this just pissed me off to no end. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of borrow a little bit from what we did the last time, where we kind of just had everything in one area. And... I'm going to start with these rooms. And I'm going to try and leave it like this so we can expand rooms this direction if we need to. We're going to need to have a way for people to come on board. And we're going to need an airlock. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and put those there like that. And then I want to go ahead and put an airlock here. And a bulkhead here. So they should be able to walk in and do that. Actually, hold on a second. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, my, my, my uh, throat's now kind of dry from yelling so much at my microphone. I'm going to turn it that way because I want this to be like the only thing in here. Actually, this cannot be the only thing in here because I, I need to get an air vent in there too. So I actually got to make this a little bit longer. So we're going to put that there. We can come over. We can get an air vent. Put the air vent in there like that. There's no oxygen to it yet. That's fine, though. Come down to furniture. We're going to get a suit rack. And I can put a suit rack right there, I think. Now, we're going to need some storage. Each one of these adds 250 storage space to the uh, space station storage maximum. I don't know if there's a base for that. I never actually counted how much stuff we get. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put all this stuff here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a wall here. So this will be the uh, the airlock and storage, and there's the docking bay. So we'll be able to turn that on as trading. Right? Yeah, enable trade. So open for trade. We're going to put a basic door in here. Just like that. And then we'll get to work on this. So, as far as beds go, I want to put the best beds that I can in there. Furniture. I want to make these rooms as best I can. So, we're going to go ahead and say dresser, 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 dresser. Right now, it only costs us money. Normally, this would cost us steel. Footlockers. A foot locker there, 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 and there. And that should be good. Now, beds, like I said, we'll leave until last. Things that we're going to need. We're going to need to have all the stuff that, that we, uh, we need to get in here. So, for example, modules, fish tank. A fish tank is too wide. 
and so does not really fit anywhere on that wall because there's only one space between the doors. Should maybe I make them a little bit wider? Yeah, maybe I want to make this a little bit wider. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Um, we'll do that. We'll do that. And whatever, I guess we're going to go whole hog on this now. There we go. Alright, so instead, if it's not 10, it's going to be 15. So that's 10 right there. 11, 12, 13... Okay, 10. What? Would you just install this? Okay, there we go. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now let's put some walls in. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. One, two, three. And we will bring the walls all the way down here, and now we can start installing some doors. Just regular doors is all we need. And this will leave us enough room that we can come back here to modules. We can do things like take the fish tank, put it there. Take the kitchen. Yeah, put it there. With enough room between the doors, we can utilize this space and just kind of maximize things. Like, this thing takes two spaces as well. Great. There. It's good. That thing can go there. What else do we need? Uh, we need to have this um, forge... So that's good. Uh, we're also going to need to have... And I'm just kind of throwing everything in right now. I'm not that invested. Because I expect everything to go incredibly poorly. But there's that. We need life support. We need oxygen storage. I'm, I'm just throwing stuff in here. We need solar cells, power cell. We need a food dispenser. We'll need to have bathrooms. We can get two bathrooms and put them, like, right there. Now, we need power cells. More importantly, though, basic tables. We can do that. And then... If this isn't enough seating for you, I don't know what is. There's now six chairs. There's literally five of you starting out. As far as power goes, I'm going to get the power cell and put it... I could put it in, the, in here, actually. What if we get rid of this container? Put the power cell right here. Then... I can just say... There we go. That should be lots of power, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know. We've never lasted long enough to really run out of power. Now, as far as furniture goes, we should be able to get nice beds. So, bed, 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 bed. Then we're going to want dressers. There we go. Basic foot lockers. I could put it right down there at the uh, the foot of the bed. It's a foot locker, so I feel like it kind of belongs there. Okay then. Uh, this is looking pretty good. Ooh, actually, you know what? I don't want to do that. I have a better idea. We're not going to put the footlockers there. 
We're not going to do it. We're still going to have foot lockers, but I'm going to put them over here. Opposite the dresser. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to put vents in here. Vents right at the, uh, the foot of every bed. So there we go. So we got vents. We still have 1,851 credits left. And stop flashing at me. Let's take a look at power. I'm just going to link everything up. There we go. That takes care of that. Um, next is going to be water. Just going to run this down here like that. And a single pipe there plums everything in. Lastly, waste. We're just going to run that down there, and I'm just going to take it straight down here to the exterior. And we'll make a waste ejector. And that looks pretty good. We still have 1,600 left, so here's what I want to do. I want to give us some room to expand. So we're going to take this and we're going to go up one. Like that. I'm going to take a ladder. There to there. So they should just be able to go up there and we'll have all this room up here to expand. Now I'm just going to drag this as far as I can. Looks like I can get 1,200 out of it. And now we have this big area up here that we can do anything we want with. We have all of our needs taken care of down here. We have housing up here. We can put more housing up here if we need it. Or we can put more units of stuff. We can put more uh, more fabrication facilities. I don't know. But this seems to be pretty bare bones. It's got everything checked off. They have quarters now. Personal quarters. Um, oxygen seems to be a bit of an issue. Oh, it's because we don't have any ice, though. Private quarters. Yeah, we, they got private quarters. I think we're good to start this. All right, I'm going to hit the button. Let's go. It's the worst that can happen. All right, I am not going to rename anyone this time. I'm not going to do it. Why? Because it doesn't matter. They're probably all going to die anyway. So I'm not going to go ahead and get attached. No, no we're in this time. No zero. Because I don't want to kill you. I'd feel bad just killing you. That's what happens every time. Let's just go. Captain Shadow Cat from the faction Crap Developers and the station Doomed. The Eagle has landed. And this time, our contact on the ground is Catsup. I'm calling you Ketchup, just because I, sp I have spite. Alright, so, game has started, and we're not going to get that far today. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to auto-assign all these quarters. Because I really don't care who goes where. But there you go. You're all assigned somewhere. Now you all need jobs. <clears throat> we need basically one of the first four up here. Well, first five. So, miner, engineer, refiner, you know, all of that. Clear that out. See that? That that's that's what I'm talking about. All right. This is this is um a little pop-up window. I click on here, and it's on top of this window. Why? Why is the, the menu for the bed on top of the menu for all of this stuff? 
Is this game breaking? No, but this is a symptom. A symptom of everything wrong with this developer. I have to unselect that. Now I can open this. And why are all of those still showing they don't have oxygen? Oh, because we never... I never set up the oxygen. Okay, that's fine. All right, fine, whatever. Uh, let's just get these these uh, jobs assigned. So assign job. First things first, we need a miner. You've got 10, 0, 2, 1, 0. Cauliflower, you're the miner. Engineer. 0, 2, 4, 0. Breakfast, you're the engineer. Refiner. 1, 4, 9. Odometer. You're the refiner. Scientist. Two, three. You're the scientist. And horseradish, that means that you are the janitor. All right. You've got your jobs. Go to work. Uh, primarily, get to work on building these pipes. Because otherwise we're not going to have air. And air is good. Go ahead and clear those up so they stop flashing at us. Alright, we've got air now. The network has been built up enough, we've got air. And he's going to get the this all, all this stuff tied in. There we go. The airlock has air now. We're good to go. So this has ice and carbon. We're going to go ahead and queue that for mining. We're going to come back to refinements. And I'm just going to set steel to infinite. Just build all the steel. And then one thing that we don't have right now that I should probably get is we don't have a way to do research. I didn't add that. So, a research desk. We'll put a research desk right there. Actually, we'll put a research desk up there. We'll cancel this one. We'll put more uh, housing on this side this time, and we'll put everything else on that side. But let's go ahead and get that built. That way we can get our scientist working and maybe we can make some progress. Maybe, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We're gonna have to be watching their moods because we, we gotta see if their moods go down and if their stress goes up. And if their stress goes up, then what else am I supposed to do? Oh, look, you're violent. Great. Anyway though, this has been going on long enough. And there's our first trader. Maybe we can investigate that next time. This has been going on long enough. Granted, I wasted half of the episode by just ranting unmercifully against these people. But I'm not apologizing for it. Instead, we'll go ahead, we'll take a break here. We'll pick it up next time with more Meeple Station. If you want to see more of me, subscribe, hit the bell icon. I mean, that you'll get to you'll get notified of every video I put out that's, you know, not this one inclusive. If you know somebody else, maybe even you know the developers, if you know the developers and you can share this with them, ooh, do so. And if they respond, ooh, bring it on. Prove me wrong. Prove me that you're actually a decent developer. Because right now, I have absolutely no sympathy and no mercy. Otherwise, though, if you enjoyed any part of this, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below. And I guess I will see you next time for more Meeple Station. And until then, take care.